Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel where we discuss all things self-improvement, mind and body. I'm Pam Carey, and today we're going to be talking about caffeine, why I gave it up, why you might choose to give it up as well, and how to do so if you decide to. If you see me drinking it on the sidewalk, if you pass me in New York, or as you saw on my thumbnail, that's decaf. I have had caffeine on average about maybe 10 times over the past two years. There was a year where I basically gave it up completely. The reason why I did this is because I noticed that I slept so much better when I cut it out. One time I cut it out because I had a cold. This was before COVID, before colds were scary. But something I read is that because, you know, as we know, caffeine is a stimulant, it can be more rejuvenating, healing, relaxing to completely cut it out during that time of healing. And yes, I did kick that cold. I have a lot of tips for doing that. I think everyone has their own little secret stuff they do though when they have a cold on how to beat it quickly. But maybe I'll shoot my own video on that sometime but anyway it did help but a nice fringe side benefit I noticed was getting way more tired around 10 p.m. when I wanted to be winding down for bed often I sort of felt jazzed and energized more than I wanted to feel around midnight you know kind of just winding down around then and I wanted to be tired at 10 with cutting out caffeine for reasons I'm going to get into in this video it will improve your sleep so much. We're going to get into the neurobiology of that, um, how this works in different people's bodies. Um, we're just going to jump in. The first thing I want everyone to know about caffeine is it does not leave your system as quickly as you think it does. If I asked you if you have caffeine around 8 a.m., if you just have a cup, like a medium cup of coffee at 8, do you feel like that's gone from your system when you go to bed at night? You would probably say yes, because on average, the general thought is try to have your caffeine before noon. And that does help. It does help to have it earlier in the day. But let's do some math. Let's say at 8 a.m. you have a coffee, maybe a medium. That might have about 120 milligrams of caffeine in it. At 2 p.m., half of that is gone from your system. Caffeine has a half-life of on average for the average individual five to six hours. That means that's how long it takes your body to get rid of half of it in your system. So that means 60 milligrams are in your system at 2 and at 8, 30 milligrams are in your system and around 10 p.m., maybe around 20, 25 milligrams of caffeine when you're trying to go to bed. That might not be a big deal for someone that's not very sensitive to it, but for some people, maybe their body gets rid of it even slower. Caffeine can have a half-life of 1.5 hours all the way to 9.5 hours depending on your body size, other substances, for example, if you smoke or if you take oral contraceptives, depending on even anxiety levels affect how you react to caffeine, which is why it's super important to work with a healthcare professional because it does have an impact on blood pressure or all sorts of other factors, pregnancy, things like that. So always work with your healthcare professional on this and follow their guidance. But even when it comes to anxiety, your doctor may not tell you to not have it, but maybe your therapist might recommend that you stop because it does have an impact on your adrenals, your hormones, so many other things. I personally gave up caffeine for the sleep benefits. However, some people certainly do for the health benefits or saving money, oral health. There's a lot of reasons that you might choose to do this. However, with sleep was where I noticed the biggest difference because sleep and alcohol both impact our sleep more than people realize. For example, if you're having two cups, that example that I just gave you, let's say you have your second cup at three, you can run the numbers on that. There is, if you have a one in the morning and one in the afternoon, it is definitely still in your system when you're going to bed. And even if you just cut out the second cup, you would sleep a lot better. So I'm not saying that you have to give it up. I, for example, do drink decaf, like I was saying, in kombucha, meaning that there was probably... I'm a nerd and I do the math on this. I had about 32 milligrams of caffeine in my system as of about noon, meaning when I go to bed, there'll just be trace amounts there because caffeine can add up. For example, if you have a dark chocolate bar, if you have some tea, if you have some decaf coffee, it, it absolutely can add up. And before you know it, you've had the equivalent of a cup of regular caffeinated coffee. I'm going to link some research down below. There's a lot more complicated neuroscience at play here. Of course, it affects dopamine and other things are going on, but one of the principal factors at play is that caffeine acts as an antagonist at the adenosine receptors, meaning that it is just delaying 
the sleepiness that you feel. So it's not that it's necessarily just making you more awake directly, it's delaying your drowsy feelings. So you can learn a lot about the neuroscience. I think it's really interesting. It can help with understanding how it's in your system, how it's affecting your body, how giving it up can help you sleep better. And of course there are some dependency factors like it you do feel less wakeful without it. However, by avoiding it, I have noticed that you can get back to a more original state. Knowing that everybody reacts to caffeine differently is one reason why you might be able to have some and fall right asleep and your friend might have some and not be able to sleep at all that night if she has it at 5 p.m. So we really have to respect and listen to our bodies, which is why I challenge you to experiment with it. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anyone's word for it. See for yourself. Don't even go with what your preference is. Genuinely see how it feels in your body. Like, yeah, I freaking miss coffee, but I feel so much better without having caffeinated coffee that I still choose to do this on a regular basis. So if you were to follow this challenge, what I would do is do it slowly to eliminate headache. What you could do is go from two cups to one cup, then one cup to a small, like if you were from medium to a small, then to a half cup, and then switching over to decaf. And you can do this over a few weeks so that you get um, either fewer headaches or hopefully no headaches at all. I think I only had headaches one or two days, just the day that I was switching from half a cup to decaf. But of course, again, everybody's going to react differently and see how you sleep. Notice when you're getting tired, how wakeful you feel the next day, Notice how many times you're waking up in the night, how long it takes you to fall asleep laying in bed, all of that kind of stuff. Notice your energy levels during the day the next day. Now, again, this might take some time for your brain chemistry to recalibrate, for you to feel less kind of hooked on it, and for you to feel back to feeling more energized without needing it in the morning. So try not to judge it too quickly. Try to do it slowly and listen to your body. And, you know, the deeper your sleep is, the more restful your sleep is, the more energized you're going to feel during the day in the long run once you're used to this. I'd love to hear your experiences with this, so let me know how this works for you all or if you've done something similar. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend if any of your friends are considering giving up caffeine or unsure about it or questioning your decision as to why you're giving it up. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Have you ever given up caffeine before or have you considered it? And finally, subscribe. It helps me know that this kind of content is helpful, helps um, me be able to produce more content like this, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. I produce content every Tuesday on psychology, fitness, and self-development. Have an awesome week, guys.